All right, hi everybody. Okay, so this is part two of the last video, which is to highlight Dash 2.5, the new release with two big features, multi-page with pages, and component properties. If you want to see the last video, just go to the last video on our YouTube channel and you can see that. In this video, we are going to focus on component properties. So Chris, what do you what can you tell us about component properties? Yeah, I'm really excited about component properties. This gets back to um, some kind of like core architectural stuff in Dash, which is um, why it took us a while to get this feature across the finish line. It was, it was pretty hard. There's some some performance considerations that um, were difficult to overcome. But one of our engineers, Philippe Duval, uh, found a really clever solution that um, finally unlocked this feature. So let me uh, let me share my screen and I'll um, talk you through it. Great. Adding your screen right now. OK, you're good to go. Great. So yeah, let's consider a uh, drop down. Um, so drop down has a set of options. Those are what you see. Um, and you might have you know, NYC, Montreal, SF. Um, and this API is great. Um, now, what if you want to customize one of these individual options? Maybe instead of the style of these options being um, black, you want them to be um, red or something like that. And so you can imagine us writing APIs like, OK, you know, label style is equal to you know, color red. Um, and then this would change the color of each of those individual options. But then what if you wanted to uh, update the style of one particular option and not all of them? Previously with Dash, you would need, uh, as a component author, designing the API, you know, what do these properties look like? You would need to design this API that would somehow um, you know, map style to these different options. So you might write something like, um, you know, label style equals and then map, say, NYC to something like color red, you know, and the rest of them would be black. Or you might, you know, you could imagine writing an API that's something like, you know, uh, label is NYC, but then that particular one has a style and that could be color, you know, red, something like this. Um, but, you know, and then what if instead of you wanting to modify the style, you also want a different class name on it, or you want it to be a link, or you want it to be an in, and it could, be, it could become really difficult as a component author to um, add all of these different properties to a component's API. You know, if you wanted to extend dropdown to have images, you know, what do you, what do you write as a component author? Do you have something like image is then, you know, some URL here, um, but then, you know, what if you want that image in the front of the label or the back of the label? It be can become really complex. You can end up writing these components or um, to, you know, with a ton of different properties to enable all the different customization that um, end users might want to, to customize the look and feel of their application, their components within it. So a much simpler API sort of conceptually is instead of... Um, having these a different property for everything that you might want to customize, imagine if you could just sort of pass in a component here, right? And then if you could pass in a component here, then, you know, you can do things like style equals, because this is just a div, and a div has all these different properties, right? Um, or, you know, if you wanted an image in here, you could then add an image tag in here like this that would be in front of the label, or it could be, you know, you could move it around. So it could be beside the label, or, you know, if you want to modify the style of the image, you can do it within here. And so like the ability to pass in components anywhere within, you know, a component's properties. So in this case, passing in an HTML div within the options property, that enables a lot more flexibility for component authors building new components for them to be able to um, allow customization throughout their component to their end users. So anywhere where there's a string, like a label, a component author um, can now extend the API of their component to not just handle strings, but also to handle components. Um, does this make sense so far, Adam? Yeah, that actually, that is a very good explanation. But just to be clear for, for those who are really starting off with Dash, Chris, you put the HTML div there 
as because it's the first option, you don't have to declare the labels before, but this actually belongs to the label, right? Yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm being like kind of fast and loose here, right, just pulling right. out these examples just to sort of like demonstrate the, the concept. If you copy and paste this code right away, like probably doesn't work. Check the okay. documentation for actually how you um, pass in components into these options. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to uh, to highlight, which is what Chris, what you said at the beginning, which is these new components go into the label of the options property. Mm -hmm. Great. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So something more like I think it's like this is how it ends up. Yep. With the exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so in Dash, you know, before this, you know, where could you pass in a component as a property? The main one is the children property of components, right? And we often don't even really think about this. You know, when we write HTML code, you know, we'll write stuff like this. And this is the same as this. So ch the children property, if a component accepts that property, is implicitly the first property of the component, you know, in the list of keywords that are supplied to that component's API. So, you know, having HTML div children equals is the same as this. Um, and so previously in Dash, children was the only property that could accept components. And so if you're writing a component as a, um, a Dash React developer, um, you could only, your, your component could only accept other components under this particular property. And that might seem to you kind of like a weird arbitrary limitation, um, but this kind of goes back um, a little bit to HTML itself. So HTML itself, I've got an example down here, provided all of its capabilities by having components as children. In this case, children are the things that are nested within other components. So for a dropdown in HTML, you're actually writing code like this, where there's a select component, and then there's an option component. And these set of option components are nested within that select component. So you know this is sort of like the children of select. But when React came along, it enabled this higher level of components beyond HTML that enabled you to pass in components as properties, not just the children component. So instead of writing code like this, you could end up writing um, code in React that would be you know, more like this, where you have options equals is a list, and then you know, option like this. Um, and so, you know, thinking kind of at a high level from a computer science perspective, in this view, this is a sort of a tree structure um, and any level of nesting is sort of direct. It's just under this one particular property. But when you have components as properties, you can have these different level of nesting of components under different properties, not just underneath the children property, but underneath different properties. And that was one of the challenges that we faced when bringing this into Dash was um, how we're traversing this tree in a way that doesn't lead to different performance degradations. And uh, one of our engineers found a clever way to do this um, that enabled this level of customization um, without uh, affecting the performance. So now we can have um, write components that enable customization through these different components as properties um, and allow a lot more flexibility in an API that feels feels more natural. Yeah, and I remember when this first came out, when I first heard from you and from Philippe that we're developing this, I was like, I was thinking about all these questions on the form of people like, how do I change the color of this drop down option? And I wanted to, this option to have an image next to it and maybe uh, a radio item with a link. I'm like, well, you could probably do it with some CSS and some, but but it's but it's a lot, right? Now mm -hmm. it's just so much easier to you just put the uh, new uh, um, dash core components or HTML components inside the options property, and you got what you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's so many examples of this in the component ecosystem. Now with this release, we've only added support within our own components within the options property, but we'll be adding support to other components to enable um, greater customization. You can think of things like the T DCC tabs component, you know, what's the content of that individual tab. In that original API, we had things like, you know, the tab style and the tab class name and all these different properties that would customize the look and feel of, of the tab itself, not the content in the tab, but the tab itself. Um, and 
you know, people want to add an image to it. They want to change the color. They want to change the style. Uh, they don't want to have to write a separate CSS style sheet to do that. And this, this feature, this architecture enables us to extend DCC tabs and other components, really anything that accepts a label um, to pass in a component to enable greater customization. I know we also, like every release that we have in Dash, we also put the document, we also update the documentation and everything is in there. Do you mind, do you mind sharing a little bit of that so the users know where to go? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, definitely don't copy and paste the code I was showing earlier. Um, the actual code in the API is within each of the components pages. So for the dropdown page, if you go to Dash and you uh, go down to the dropdown page, then there is components as option labels for this particular component. And you can see here what the API looks like where label can now be an HTML div or it can be any component. You could pass in a DCC graph or a data table in here or a leaflet chart. I mean, I don't recommend doing that <laughs> for you know, a dropdown API, but just to demonstrate sort of like the, the crazy flexibility that this enables. Um, and you know this particular example, we're showing a little image, we're modifying the CSS and style. And this is uh, also available for other components like radio items. And radio items, uh, drop down, and checklist. Those three components. That's right. Um, and you know, expect in future releases, expect uh, other components to be extended with um, with these different component properties. And if you're a component author, if you're maintaining any of the Dash components, you know, look through the, the components that you've written and consider if you can extend the API for those components to accept properties as well. If you're wrapping an existing React component, it may be that that React component already accepts different components as properties. Um, Dash didn't allow you to expose that before, but now Dash does. So there is a chapter in here that explains this in more detail, especially if you are a component author, we go into detail a little bit more about the different types of the sort of shapes of properties that um, that you can expose in your component. Thank you, Chris. Um, very good overview of component as properties. Also, remember, we are going to have, uh, we have the Dash 2.5 post that you can look into and read more about the examples. Definitely go to Dash documentation and like always share, share. These are really cool components, makes your app uh, a lot more professional looking, a lot more customizable. So we would love to see them, whether you share it on social media, don't forget to always share it also on the forum. We are showing tell tag and we'll make sure to, to give your, your post a boost. Uh, Chris, any any final words about the Komod properties? Anything to keep in mind? Anything you want to tell our viewers before we end? No, that's great. Um, yeah, love to see uh, see everybody on the community forum. Thanks, cool. Adam. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.